Okay, so the top for definition of invertebrate. Animals without a backbone. And then 97% of all animals are invertebrates. Okay? Like I said, this slide's a little bit different than what you have on the notes, so just listen to me. Those are what you write for definition. Then, underneath that, it says, scientists, scientists look at blank to classify them. Okay? The answer is symmetry. Scientists look at something called symmetry to group the animals into groups. Okay, now we mentioned symmetry when uh, studying the poem The Tiger, okay, but symmetry is an art word that means, has to do with how the animal is shaped. Is it similar on different sides of its body? Okay, there are three kinds of symmetry that we're going to talk about next in your notes. Three kinds of symmetry. The first kind is radial symmetry. Radial symmetry. If you know the word radius, uh, having to do with geometry of circle, then you should remember. You should easily remember that radial symmetry has to do with an organism that has a central point, and then branching out from that point are similar structures. Okay. So, for example, a starfish. The starfish has, has one central point, and then similar structures branch out from that in the middle. That would be radial symmetry. Next, we have bilateral symmetry. Bilateral symmetry. What does the prefix bi mean? Same thing as in binomial. Bella? Two. Two. So bilateral symmetry is when an organism has two sides that match up. If you draw a line down the center of their body. So if I chop this this lobster in half like this, okay, it will match on both sides. Same thing with the, same thing with the human. If I draw a line down the center of my body like this, okay, I have bilateral symmetry. I have an arm on each side, I have a leg on each side, I have an eyeball on each side, I have an ear on each side, etc. Now, depending on the person, they will not match up exactly. Okay, you may have one foot bigger than the other, or you may have one arm that has more muscles than the other, whatever the case may be. In extreme cases, some people uh, are unfortunate enough to be missing fingers or missing arms and legs. Okay? But in general, the human species has a similar structure on both sides. Okay, that would be bilateral symmetry. And then lastly, we have asymmetric. The prefix A. Uh, is similar to the prefix in, meaning like the opposite of. So asymmetric or asymmetry are animals that have no definite shape at all, such as sponges. Okay? They have really no pattern or shape to their structure. They kind of go all over the place, which I'll show you in just a minute. Parker? Um, there was a question. I didn't see For invertebrates, the very top. Okay, so you were not paying attention at all that first time. Did you see what I underlined in red? Okay, that I said you need to under you need to write everything I underlined in red. So I will get with you and do that during snack break. Landon. Starfish, lobster. Yep.
Yeah. Correct. Yes. So down to the detail, it may not match exactly, but the general shape should match. Okay. All right. So talking about invertebrates. Okay. There are nine different phyla that we're going to look at. Okay. The first one are cnidarians. So in your notes, you should see the section for cnidarians. Cnidarians have radial symmetry. Okay. That means they have one central point, like the starfish. Okay. And it branches out from there. Now, starfish do not fall into this category because organisms within this phyla typically have stinging tentacles around their mouths that they use to catch food. So our two main examples here are jellyfish and polyp. A polyp is very similar to a jellyfish. Okay? So jellyfish have those long tentacles that kind of hang down. Okay? And the fish or other organisms that are swimming by accidentally get kind of caught up in those. They get stung and kind of paralyzed for a second. And that's what the jellyfish then eats. Okay, they kind of like use the tentacles to draw it up into its mouth, which is on the, under, the underside of its body. Okay? Ethan? Ethan? Yes? Would you like a band-aid? So, those are the Nidarians. Now, do not, uh, uh, don't forget, Nidarian starts with the letter C, even though the C is silent. Okay, Nidarian. So, main examples are jellyfish and polyp. Next group we're going to look at are sponges. Okay? Now, sponges, like I said, they are asymmetric. What I mean by that is this. If I try and draw a line down any side of the sponge, it's never going to match exactly. Okay? This doesn't match. That doesn't match. This doesn't match. Okay? That's asymmetric. There is no, like, similar structure or pattern to the body of a sponge. Now, this is not the same kind of sponge like what you would use in your kitchen sink to wash dishes, okay? Now, the, the structure is the same. Just like the sponge in your sink has holes all in it for you to kind of soak up the water and soap and stuff, the sponges that are, like, the real animal sponges, they also have holes in them, okay? They're kind of, they're porous, meaning they have all kinds of holes throughout their body, okay? But that helps the sponges because sponges are very primitive animals, which means they're not very advanced. So the water in the ocean flows through the holes of their bodies all the time. But that's actually a good thing because in the ocean, the water contains microorganisms or like microscopic bacteria floating around in the water. And that's what the sponge eats. So as the water filters through the sponge, it works like a strainer almost, and it traps all the organisms and allows the water to pass through. So it traps those microorganisms, and then that's what it eats. Okay? So they filter food out of the water as it passes through them. That should be your second point on your notes. They filter food out of the water as it passes through them. I believe you have uh, the they blank as it passes through them. No. Or they eat by blank as it passes through them. So you would write filtering food out of the water. They eat by filtering food out of the water. Gavin, you have that written down? Yeah, I just wanted to, I, I, I put it in the different way, like filtering water. Okay. Well, filtering food from water. Just flip those two words. Filtering water from food doesn't make much sense. Parker? Polyp, P O L Y P S. Asymmetric. Yes, kind of does. Uh, I'm. I don't know if coral is classified with the plants or with the animals. 
And if so, I don't know which pad, which file I'm in. Question. One more, Landon. So are they made from the sea sponges? No, no, no. The name? No, no, no. How they live on the golden that do they get that? That from this? I believe so, yes. And also, um, um, I want to, I don't really know, actually. I want to say when they're in the ocean, they're soft, but if they're, like, picked and then dried out, like, they, they're, they're killed, basically, and kind of dried out, I want to say they become more, like, hard rock. That, that's, that, that's just my guess. I really don't know. All right, next category, roundworms. I'm going to go ahead and warn you that there are three different phyla for different types of worms, okay? So we're going to talk a lot about worms. But roundworms outnumber every other animal on the earth. There are more roundworms on earth than any other animal. Okay? Now, you don't always see them because they're either living inside of other animals or they're living in the ground or they're living in you know, trees or dirt or soil or whatever. So we don't interact with them a whole lot, but there are tons of them on earth. Different types of roundworms can either be predators parasites, or decomposers, okay? Here's what that means. A predator is an organism that kills something else and then eats it, okay? A parasite lives off of the animal as the animal is still alive. A decomposer, the animal's already dead, and they come and break it down, okay? So... Roundworms are commonly found in our pets, unfortunately, okay? And here's why. Our pets typically walk around outside with, they don't have shoes on, they don't have any kind of body covering, they sniff dirty things, they lick dirty things, they walk in dirty things, etc. okay? So that, those are the kinds of areas where you would find roundworms. Okay, so then they typically get into the bodies of the animals and live off the body of the animal, okay? Then the animal starts to show signs of being sick. You got to take it to the vet and get the worm, it dewormed or get the worms removed, okay? Or they get, or they give you medicine to put in like the food of the animal and they eat it and it helps kill the worm, okay? Now, that's roundworms. Now, that's also why you're not supposed to go walking around outside and in like garbage dumps with no shoes on. And you worms. Okay. Hannah. They start small and microscopic. Depending on how long they live off of something or how long they live in the organism, they can grow to be pretty long. Typically they just give you medicine that kills off, kills off the bacteria inside. Humans? Uh, I guess you could, but it's very rare with humans because we don't typically sniff and lick dirty things. <laughs> Potentially. Uh, Ethan? Maybe. Yes. Right here? Yep. So what happens is, um, typically the, uh, let's see, so if, let's say there is an animal that has worms, like the cat here, okay? The cat, the, so the adult roundworm is living in the small intestine of the cat, okay? The eggs are passed, the eggs of this, of the roundworm are passed from the animal to the ground through its feces, poop, okay? Then the poop, it contains infested, uh, infected larva, okay? Then when another animal comes along and, let's see, the host either ingests eggs containing infected larva or an intermediate host with larva arrested in its tissue. So somehow the egg, either from the rats or the animals that, like, walk around the poop or they eat it or if they other kinds of gross things, 
then the rat gets the eggs or gets the gets infected. Which, if the animal larva may be shed in the in the milk and ingested by something. So either the, the the cat then kills the mouse and gets the gets the worms again. That's how it's kind of passed from animal to animal. Yeah, interesting. All right, we're gonna do one more category, and then uh, we'll be, I'll take some more questions. And we'll be done for the day. So, how are we now? Arthropods. Okay, this is the next phyla group. Okay, now arthropods are cool because they have jointed body parts. Okay, if you think about it, a spider does not move its legs like this. Yes. Okay, it doesn't have stick legs. Typically, it moves like this. Yes. Okay, that, those are jointed legs, okay? These are non-jointed stick kind of legs, okay? This is a spider, all right? Same thing with uh, lobsters and insects as well. They have joints where they can bend their legs, okay? They also have bilateral symmetry, which means they have two sides that are similar, okay? Here's the bilateral symmetry for the beetle. Same thing with the butterfly. You could split it in half and have the same on both sides. Same thing with the tarantula, okay, the housefly, and the lobster, okay? They also have segmented bodies. Typically, when you look at an arthropod, you can see the different sections of the body. Usually, it's a head, a thorax, and an abdomen, okay? Sometimes the head and thorax are kind of combined, and it's just two sections. But either way, there's like a head part and a body part. Okay? Now, you do need to write all of these examples. Lobster, housefly, beetle, butterflies, and spiders. And then below that, where it has the list of examples, the examples one, two, and three, we're going to write the further divisions for invertebrate animals. Okay? I'll show you what I mean by that. Arthropods is one of the only phyla that we in class are going to talk about its further divisions into classes. Okay? Obviously, every single phyla will keep dividing into classes and families and orders and things like that. But for the sake of our class, we're only going to look at the different divisions for arthropods. So I'm going to show it to you on the note, and then we'll come back to this. Uh, probably tomorrow. So, on the notes, here are your three different categories. Crustaceans, which include uh, kind of water arthropods, like crabs, lobsters, things like that. Arachnids, which includes spiders, scorpions, ticks, and mites. And insects, which include dragonflies and butterflies. I don't need to write this down, and then I'll let you go. Okay? So, again, if I went back to that classification chart, okay, so we had kingdom, animalia, and then it divides into the vertebrae and invertebrae, and the invertebrae has all these different groups, right? Like this? Right? Okay. One of those would be arthropods. And then that one phyla would divide into three groups, three classes, which are the crustaceans, arachnids, and insects. Okay? We'll look in more detail at each of those groups tomorrow. Okay? But once you have these written down, you can go ahead and put your notes away. And then we'll have our snack.
you know, once you put that away, then you can go.